the show. Uh, my very first guest is seated. He is in the person of Richard the Champion. He's the CEO of Rockmar Pharma uh, Limited. Good morning, sir. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, how are you doing this morning? By his grace and mercy. Okay. I'm doing good. Okay. So, uh, Rockmar Pharma uh, was one of the few indigenous Ghanaian pharmaceutical companies. So, I received uh, awards at the first ever uh, Ghana Pharma Awards held on the 2nd of March 2018 at the Move and Pick Hotel. Rockmar Pharma CEO, who is here with me right now, clinched the Promising CEO Award. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and the Promising Company, uh, he was also nominated as well in three award categories, uh, Promising Entrepreneur of the Year, Promising Chief Executive of the Year, and Promising Company of the Year. He won Promising, he won promising CEO of the Year. So I believe my very first question is, how does it feel to be, to have won that award? I'd say to God be the glory and uh, great things he has done. And I know that um, greater things he will do. It only comes to encourage me as a young man who started uh, with my ten fingers mm -hmm. and um, I have, you know, a solid board of directors who have ably assisted me and brought me to this far. It also um, encourages me to situate right my vision, mission and um, goals and objectives uh, with the company's core values of professionalism, excellence, tenacity or drive, mm -hmm. you know, customer care, which is lacking in most of, most of our industries. Uh, most of our industries. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and um, dedication, you know, to do were, were you expecting, did you expect to win, by the way? Pardon me? Were you expecting to win? Well, it came to you as a surprise. In fact, um, it did not come to me as a surprise, really. Oh, okay. And um, for the three categories, <laughs> interestingly, I thought uh, I could have gotten more than one. Oh, okay. Okay. So now we come, uh, so if you look at uh, the awards uh, system and all that, uh, your other uh, competitors, so to speak, do you have anything to say to them? And of course, if you want to dedicate the award to certain people, like the board, which helped you come this way and all. Oh, I would say... Um, to my fellow, you know, um, industry players yeah. who <coughs> competed with me, I wish them the best. And I know that it is in their um, competition with us that brings out the best for the people, the good people of this country. Mm -hmm. And um, I would want to thank my board of directors, especially my chairman, Mr. Edwin Kofi Fianke, mm -hmm. who is on me uh, daily uh, in their fighting, I would, I would say. And then to my dear wife, uh, Mrs. Mercy mm -hmm. Obnewa Champo, a geodetic engineer by profession, but behind the scenes is doing so much mm -hmm. for Rokuma Pharma. My staff, who are dedicated and committed and the immense support they are giving and uh, not forgetting about the customers who allow us space on their shelves to display our brands. Okay. I want to say a big thank you and dedicate it to them. Uh, very soon I'll be asking you your opinion on the Ghana's uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry, whether it is thriving, whether what more we can do to make it uh, thrive and all that. But before we do, I want to ask, how did you first get started in the pharmaceutical uh, business, so to speak? Frankly speaking, I think um, it's born out of passion and uh, my zeal for excellence okay. in every endeavor of life that I find myself. Um, as a, a young lad, I was privileged to have done my national service with the then Danafco, which was the leading name in medicine. And so it became very difficult for me when I gained admission to the medical school, mm -hmm. I did my first year university exams at Legon, and the zeal and the passion to go read pharmacy out there was very strong, and I had to mm -hmm. take a U-10 and go to the University of Science and Technology 
where it all began. And so, having started, you know, I came out with a second class upper division. And whilst in school, at every opportunity, I remember before I completed, I had worked with five different agencies or pharmacies mm -hmm. on attachment. And it's something that is lacking, you know, in our day and age. Volunteerism really, really is lacking. And uh, students are quick to want to go out there, uh, job for money whilst in school. And I find that very, very disturbing. Or maybe one or two volunteerism and then maybe they, they, they push for the money. No, the money is important. You would agree. Whilst you are in think school. the eagerness is too, is too much. The eagerness is too much lately. <laughs> maybe we should, maybe you still want some form of reward or something. Yes, mm -hmm. but the reward will come like today. Yeah. After 18 years of uh, my business sacrifice. or company's mm -hmm. establishment and sacrifice, I mean, I have been awarded. 18 years? Yes. Wow. It started in the year 2000 as a small retail outlet at Dansuman, uh, to be precise, on the Osafodazi Road, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mensa Shapke. Mm -hmm. And having worked through from retail through wholesale to distribution to importation mm -hmm. and hoping to go into manufacturing. Yeah. Yes, it has not come easy though. So this whole process. It's a process. process. Yeah. And so, like we know from the good books, in God's own time, he makes all things mm -hmm. beautiful. Okay. You just need to wait for your time. Yeah, so you're urging the youth to just keep calm and you know the learn the ropes and all that. It's very, very important yeah. because if you don't and you even get catapulted to the top, uh, you will not last. Yeah. You will be exposed. So uh, the, in describing your journey uh, thus far, 18 yeah. years of it, I'm sure there's, there were some uh, challenges you had to surmount and all that. Uh, would you say they were peculiar to just you or is this a general problem when it comes to a pharmaceutical society in Ghana? In fact, I would even extend it further to say it's a general problem with uh, our economy, oh, a really? general problem with the nation, okay. the general problem with the country. Okay, you can uh, elaborate on that. Yeah. Yes, because um, we hardly mentor. And oh. so you come out of school, you are left to your fate. That is the first step. Secondly, as a nation, uh, you don't even know what the national policy guidelines for your profession uh, stipulates. And so you wallow through the mud and then worse of it, you need support, you need um, information, you need access, and these are all lacking. And for you, you need financing arrangement. You go to the banks. They are not there for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get started? When you say they are not there for you, that, does that mean you don't have the financial backing enough for them to support you or they are just not there for you? How do you mean that? I recall my first loan I took from one of the banks mm -hmm. in the year 2000. And um, I was asked to deposit 4 million Ghana cities in those days, which was 400 wow. Ghana, um, to qualify for a loan of 500. With what? 500 Ghana. <laughs> I found it uh, to be charitable. Mm -hmm a bit absurd. Yeah. Why not go for my four million from you instead of come for a loan of five hundred. Five million yeah. or five hundred yeah. today. But I was advised by a very good friend that banking is all about relationship. And so Richard, take it after all you earn some savings mm -hmm. on your four million and then grow and nurture that relationship. Mm. I took that step of faith and today that bank has become the backbone of Rockma Pharma Limited. Mm -hmm. And at another opportunity we'll give you the chance to mention <laughs> which bank that is. Uh, but you can go ahead and mention those uh, peculiar challenges. You mentioned the three. Yes and three. then you know on the national front you know pharmaceuticals uh, for want of a better word it's not because of the pharmacists uh, that uh, wherever they are stored, 
the place is air conditioned mm -hmm. and provided with that ambience of good temperature, storage, etc. That is to prevent decomposition and decay and breakdown of the active ingredients. And so with doom so with uh, the, the, the disruptions of uh, um, power, supply. power supply and so on, it also presents with a challenge. Then you have um, government support or policy, which is also not espoused, not made plain, not made clear. But is there, is there one? Is there a policy on the pharmaceuticals? In fact, I know it is in the offing, okay. and uh, it's yet to uh, be spelled out. It's yet to be uh, probably um, adored. But mm. as we speak today, uh, I don't know of any uh, national policy okay. along business lines, aside of um, government uh, staggering support yeah. once in a while coming through for us. and not to talk about the NHI, you know, our industry yeah. used to be cash and carry. And then with the introduction of the national health insurance, um, if I tell you, you will not believe it, but that is the fact. Yeah. As I sit here, uh, we are still owed the last quarter of 2016 okay. for the provision of pharmaceutical services by NHI and for the best part of 2017, we have not been paid. Mm, as soon as you mentioned 2016, I realized maybe coming forward, there will be other obstacles as well. In, in the form of challenges, would you also say uh, those who sell their wares, in, for instance, in Chocho, <coughs> by the roadsides, uh, those kind of, uh, how, do I, how do I even describe them, those kind of local <sighs> vendors, uh, does it impact the society? Does it share, does it create, uh, for instance, the solar for these yaks and those kind of things by the roadside and all, does it in any way impact, challenge, uh, does it pose any challenge to the pharmaceutical society? Or they are part of you? They, 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 they couldn't have been and they can't be a part of us. I mean, I, I don't want to use the word quacks, mm -hmm. you see, because I was taught in my first year that um, drugs, whatever shape or form, in small quantities and supervised by the expert, if you take it, has the potential of side effects. Mm -hmm. And today, what do we see? Because of this um, free, do I call it, wholesale of uh, drugs in buses at uh, stations and in places and uh, in quote unregulated mm -hmm. and most of our hospitals are recording very high levels of kidney diseases of patients reporting I know recently there was a, a news mm -hmm. uh, a letter to the effect that uh, Kolebu Teaching Hospital for instance is uh, recording uh, a lot of kidney uh, diseases with patients who abuse some of these drugs. And for our youth, I don't know what, I mean, you need an aphrodisiac for. If um, at my age, I am so uh, active uh, and healthy, and, and, healthy and all that without yeah. having to depend on them. And once you get hooked, you become addicted uh -huh. and on and on. Um, that is the end of the story. Yeah. It's not the best thing. And I'll call on the regulatory bodies as well as our good selves, the yeah. professionals in there, to collaborate and work hand in hand to ensure that some of these things are kept in our so, society. Uh, we may not have much time, so I want you to uh, answer this. Uh, available statistics indicate that we import 70% of our pharmaceutical needs, while 30% is manufactured uh, locally. Is there a way we can improve upon this situation? And why is it so in the first place? Yeah, the statistics is very disturbing and yeah. staggering, um, especially when uh, we, as a nation, um, in 2016, for instance, um, our pharmaceutical 
imports uh, were valued at around 223 uh, million US dollars mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, an open market of about 305 million. Uh, and we are exporting just 1.4 million cities, uh, oh, wow. million dollars rather, mm -hmm. worth of pharmaceuticals. I mean, look at yeah, yeah. the, it's so fast. It's so yeah. fast. Yeah. And that alone tells you that as a, a nation or a country, we need to have a national uh, policy that will shape in and guide us to the promised land for us to know exactly where we want to get to in the next five years, medium term, long term, uh, to avoid some of these things. We also have to look at the issue of government support, uh, provision of soft loans and assistance as done with the EDIF fund, but not to just uh, a few selected uh, pharma companies as was done in times past, but make sure that the various bodies under the pharma sector are adequately uh, supported so that we can grow the industry together as best practice has taught us in some other countries. Okay. I understand you're a national executive, um, uh, executive council chamber of pharmacy. Okay. You're, you're, so what are some of the uh, vote functions of uh, the chamber? If you can give it to us, we don't have that much time. Okay, so, yeah. okay. I think um, um, until recently, you know, the pharmaceutical uh, sector was bedeviled with several splinter groups and bodies. And for want of time, I wouldn't bore you by enumerating. Oh, not bore me. All but maybe we don't have that much time to. All of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was. It is one industry with several splinter groups. At one point, a uh, minister of state asked us why we are so disjointed and uh, not because everybody in there yeah. is uh, for his parochial and uh, selfish interest. interest. And so there was a need, if you recall, um, um, at one point in time, if the rec regulator came after you, you know, to want to run you down yeah. or to fall in line, you didn't have a unifier. Nobody was there to speak for you uh, ap apart from your good self. So there was the need to have a unifier. And that was how come the chamber uh, wow. came into existence. And the chamber is there to collaborate, to cooperate, to uh, ensure that best practices internationally mm -hmm. that are acceptable, are instituted, both to check on our <coughs> members and to ensure that we comply with the rules and regulations guiding our operations as business people and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a need for all of us to come together and have that common front okay. and a common mouthpiece okay. in the chamber of pharmacy so uh let me i just want i'll prefer a yes or no answer then i can pick your final thoughts with all that you have said would you say the future prospects of the ghana pharmaceutical society are they bright or there's much more work we can do to improve it oh i would say that um although we have our challenges and yeah. um, it's a yes the answer is yes oh, okay. it's, it's very bright because in the sub-region um, I think we're one of the best um, in terms of regulatory bodies, mm -hmm. talking about the FDA, the Ghana Standards Authority, and all you of that. You said yes, and then you started explaining that yes. Are those your final thoughts? But you go ahead. No. <laughs> that, are, that is not my final thought. My yeah. final thought is that um, we should all come together as uh, industry players mm -hmm. and to assist government uh, to put in place a national uh, drug policy uh, and national uh, pharma business policy that will shape in and guide us as as colleague professional pharmacists um, wherever you are operating um, if I started with my ten fingers and um, today 
my efforts have not been overlooked. Yeah. I want to also encourage them to do of their best. Uh, looking at the patient who is the focus of our existence. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Richard Champon. He's a uh, He's the CEO of Rockmar Pharma, and he just won the award of uh, the promising CEO at the just uh, ended uh, Ghana Pharma Awards. Uh, congratulations again, and I wish you all the best in, in times to come. Thank so, you. Of course, uh, we'll be making way for Thank my you. second conversation. Uh, please don't go anywhere. The show continues Thank right you. after this. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.